I was taking the bus home from work one night as usual. There weren't many people on the bus besides me, just a handful of other commuters going home late. I sat in the back and listened to music to keep anyone from talking to me. It was a long day at work and I had school the next day. When I got bored of my phone, I liked to stare out the window so I could have something to look at other than the inside of the bus. But most of the time when it's that late, I can't see much. That night, however, I saw something out of a nightmare. A huge, lifted truck pulled up next to the bus, perfectly matching speeds. And there were two creepy old men inside staring right at me. I tried to look away and pretend not to notice in case maybe it was just a coincidence. But as we kept going down the road, the truck didn't pull ahead or fall behind even a foot. The driver kept the truck right at the spot of the bus that I was on, and the passenger was relentlessly staring me down. I knew I was being watched. I've dealt with weirdos on the bus before, but this was different. Those guys didn't have a trace of harmlessness in their eyes that most weird guys have. They were mean and gross looking, and they knew what they were doing by scaring the crap out of me. I had no idea what to do and I didn't have much time to think about it either. I was already close to my stop. I didn't want to get off the bus at my stop because I knew in my gut that they would just stop and follow me. And plus, then they would know where I lived. But then again, if I tried to stay on the bus, how long would they keep following me? Would they ever stop? Finally, I decided it wasn't worth getting dumped off somewhere I wasn't familiar with and I should just try to get home. The upside was that my house was right around the corner from the bus stop. It usually only took me a minute to walk, but if I needed to I could shrink that to 30 seconds or less. The bus came to a stop and I got off, immediately breaking into my fastest possible power walk. Unfortunately, I heard the truck pull over behind me and stop. Another shot of adrenaline coursed through me and I managed to walk even faster. A moment later I heard the doors opened and shut, followed by footsteps. It sounded like big 200 pound men in boots marching to get me, closer and closer until it was right behind me. Before I knew it, I was at the front door to my house. I punched the code in faster than I have in my life and opened the door, stepped inside, then quickly turned around and shut the door behind me. But it was too late. One of the men got to the door and tried to force his way in. The only thing that kept him from barging straight through the door was my foot jammed underneath it and my entire panicking body weight pushing against him. Somehow, with all of my might, I managed to fight back and win and close the door. I locked it immediately, only for the door to almost get broken down by that creep banging and screaming on it for me to let him in. Open the door! Open it or I'll let myself in! Get away from me! Or what? You don't stand a chance against the both of us. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! All I could think to do was scream that I was going to call the police over and over again. I didn't know what they expected me to do. Just sit on the floor crying and wait for them to break in. Obviously, they weren't very smart. They looked confused. Like they never heard anyone say that they were calling the cops before. But they finally got the message and ran off. After I caught my breath from all the screaming, I called my parents and then the police. They asked to review the footage captured by the doorbell camera. They took their pictures and used them to ask the public if anyone has seen these men or know who they are. But it's been quite a while and nothing has come of it. At least I haven't seen a trace of them either. Though I'm still dealing with the after effects and trauma of looking over my shoulder all the time. Worried to death that they'll follow me again and corner me somewhere. Every time I see a lifted truck, or any pickup truck really, my heart jumps and my mind starts racing, forcing me to wonder what would have happened to me if I hadn't made it into my house in time. What disturbs me about that even more is what the men were holding in their hands in the video captured at the door. The one who almost got through was holding a black rag, which the police believed was probably soaked in chloroform. That kind of eliminates any doubt that they were trying to kidnap me. I never had a problem with riding the bus until that night, but now, I don't know if I'll ever be able to ride public transit again. Unfortunately, I have to be a bit of a burden now, because I have to make it my parents' duty to drive me wherever I need to go, or carpool with co-workers and friends until I get my own car. Anything beats taking a chance on being alone on the bus ever again. This story was inspired by quite possibly one of the scariest rain camera footages on the internet. A younger girl appears to be heading home and punching in her buzzer code. Oddly calm, cool, and collected, she swiftly gets inside her home just before two large men enter her porch. 
One of the men can be seen trying to open the door, but when he realizes it's locked, he begins to casually knock on the door. The girl starts to scream, threatening to call the cops and scaring the men away. But what is disturbing is the black cloth the men were holding. One can only speculate that it was chloroform. What could have been a night of horrors had the men got a hold of the girl is something just downright terrifying. This all happened a few weeks ago. I had just recently moved into a new neighborhood in Ohio. I lived alone and had moved to be closer to where I worked. It was a pretty nice neighborhood and I didn't have any complaints, at least for a while anyway. Then it started to get a little worse. For the past couple of weeks, there had been a huge surge of people in the neighborhood having their houses ding-dong ditched in the middle of the night. People would be awakened by the doorbell going off over and over again. But when they went to answer the door, no one would be there. Normally, this wouldn't have been that concerning to people. After all, this kind of thing happens sometimes. The problem was that it was happening to so many different people all over the neighborhood. There had been over 30 different reports of ding-dong ditchers, and what was worse was that there had even been some break-ins and reports of people being attacked. Despite the high crime rates, no arrests had been made. The police said that they were looking into it, but they didn't seem to be making any progress. They probably had enough on their plates without having to worry about some doorbells. The whole situation had become a huge topic of conversation around the neighborhood. A lot of people were complaining about it and trying to come up with solutions, but I wasn't too worried. I assumed it was because of the summertime and some of the local kids were just being a little mischievous. I was sure that it would pass once school started. Plus, nothing had happened to me yet and I had already been living there for a couple of months. It seemed like it was being blown out of proportion. Then, a little more recently, it started happening to me too. <coughs> what the hell is going on? I started getting a lot of doorbell rings around nighttime. At first it was just once or twice a week, but then it started happening at least two or three times every other day, and it was always around two or three in the morning. I figured of course it was the ding-dong ditchers. I didn't want to let it bother me since I knew that's what they wanted, but it was getting really annoying. I could rarely get a full night's sleep anymore. Even on the nights when nothing happened, I would still worry that I would be woken up all of a sudden, so it made it hard for me to fall asleep as well. I didn't want to call the police because I knew they were already getting enough calls from my neighbors. I also knew that it wouldn't do much since the ding-dong ditchers always ran away right after anyway. There was no way the police could have come in time to catch them. I heard that a lot of residents have been installing ring cameras on their front doors. I decided to do the same, but I've been haunted ever since I installed that camera. It was all because of this one night. I was sleeping soundly for the first time in a while, when I heard the doorbell ring again. It was around 1.30 in the morning. At first, I had a sudden urge to run to the door and try to catch whoever was tormenting me. I was tired of being awakened every night for no reason. I wanted to put an end to it. But then I remembered my ring camera, and I realized there was no need for me to get up. I would easily be able to see who had been there on the footage. I decided to sleep it off and check the camera in the morning. The next day, I woke up feeling pretty groggy and headed to work. I felt tired the whole morning. It had taken me a little while to fall asleep again the night before. I could hardly focus on what I was doing. Later on, during my break, I remembered the camera footage. I had completely forgotten to check it. I brought it up on my phone and started scrolling the footage. That's when I saw something disturbing. When I got to the time just before my doorbell had gone off the night before, I caught a glimpse of something in the distance, and I paused the video. There was a man standing across the street. 
I could barely make it out since he was at the edge of the camera's range, but there was definitely someone there. As I let the footage play again, I watched the man stand there for several minutes, just staring at my house. Then, as the footage continued, the man slowly began walking towards the camera. When he got closer, I saw just how creepy he looked. He was wearing the scariest jigsaw mask. He kept tilting his head back and forth while pressing his face up against my camera, taunting me and saying stuff like, I wanna play a game. I wanna play a game. I wanna play a game! If you answer the door, I'm going to hurt you. But if you don't, you live. <laughs> he then started laughing like a deranged psycho. I was freaked out as I watched the video, but I had to see what happened next. The man went completely gone and paused in front of the camera. He just stared at it for several seconds and then rang the doorbell a bunch of times. A moment later, he suddenly sprinted across the street and stood in the same spot as before. He stood there for several minutes waiting, staring at my door. Then he slowly walked down the sidewalk out of the camera's view. I was pretty shaken after watching the footage, but I was also just happy that I hadn't gone to check the door that night. I don't know what the man would have done to me if I had, but what terrifies me the most was that every time I heard the doorbell ring prior to getting a ring camera, it was probably that same man. I ended up reporting it to the police and showing them my camera footage. They now believe that the neighborhood attacks were caused by this man, and are now currently asking the public for any leads. All I know is that he's still out there for now. <coughs> the story was inspired by disturbing ring camera footage that was taken in the summer of 2023. It happened when there was a high surge in cases where people would hear their doorbell ring in the middle of the night. But one resident just so happened to capture something disturbing on their ring camera footage. It was a video of a masked man ringing his doorbell, then immediately running across the street just to stand and watch the house. The resident immediately disclosed it to police and incurred that it happened just after 1.30 a.m. on August 26. After the footage was posted online, multiple residents from the same neighborhood claimed to have seen some other suspicious activity, such as possible thefts. Police are currently working to figure out who the masked man is and why he was there. Well, as you know, almost every homeowner has video surveillance of some kind these days. One Bowling Green homeowner says he woke up to an unsettling sight on his camera, and now police are involved. 13 Action News reporter Megan Daniels joins us with the story all new at 6. One man says he woke up to the sound of his doorbell ringing, and when he went downstairs to check it out, the sight was unsettling. Take a look at your screen. This is the doorbell footage of an unidentified masked man who rang one homeowner's doorbell, then ran to the street. It may look like he ran away, but if you take a closer look, you can see the masked man just standing there facing the home. Kind of just stared at the homeowner before uh, then eventually fleeing. This uncomfortable encounter happened just after 1.30 Sunday morning on Champaign Avenue. Police say when they posted it to Facebook, neighbors sounded off. When we posted on Facebook, obviously, um, people made comments and it appeared that other people in the neighborhood indicated that maybe they had seen some other suspicious uh, activity in the neighborhood and were concerned about possible thefts. Right now, police are trying to figure out who the man is and why he was there. Uh, whether this was just a harmless person ringing the doorbell to uh, try to mess, mess with somebody or freak somebody out or whether there are the more sinister things going on, we don't know, unfortunately. If you have any information on this incident or the masked man, police are asking you to call Crime Stoppers. I guess I would say that bachelor life was fun. I lived alone in a small bungalow type house. It wasn't much, but I could come and go as I pleased. I had just recently moved out of my parents' house, so it was nice to have some freedom for a change. It was a little creepy living on my own, but I needed to move out so that I could start dating and actually have the luxury of bringing females home. It's not easy having to maneuver around your parents all the time. Everything started out just fine, but more recently, something strange had been happening. I was starting to feel paranoid, not even just every once in a while. I started to feel it constantly. Whenever I was alone at home, 
I would begin to feel really creeped out for no reason at all. I wasn't sure if it was just because I had moved out and was developing paranoia from living alone, but I was starting to feel concerned about it. Sometimes, I could swear that I heard a voice. I tried to tell myself that it was all in my head, that there was no way any of it was real, but I kept hearing it. It sounded like a little girl's voice, distorted and far away, barely audible. There was something about it that made me shudder. I thought that it was my neighbors for a while. I figured that they must have a kid that I could hear talking, but it didn't make any sense. There was no way that I was hearing noises from another house that often. No walls were that thin. Then I thought that it could possibly be the air vents combined with the wind or something, but I heard it from every room in the house. Sometimes it would be in one room and then I'd hear it in a completely different area later on. I couldn't figure out what it could be. It really freaked me out though. I began to feel unsafe in my own home. The voice would even wake me up at night sometimes. When that happened, I would search the house and even look around outside to see what it could be. I never found anything though. It was always empty. I started becoming more and more paranoid and scared. I was afraid to be in my house. It was already costing me sleep and now I felt like it was taking away my sanity as well. I tried to ignore it, to learn to live with it, but it was messing with my head. The sounds were always the same. It was always the same voice, over and over again. It was never ending. One day, I finally decided to set up a ring camera around the house. I didn't know if it would do anything, but I figured that if there was actually something in my home, the camera would have to pick it up. I had to try something. I wasn't very hopeful in the beginning, but somehow the camera seemed to work. I hadn't heard anything since I had it installed. It had been days, and there was nothing but quiet. I couldn't believe it. I finally felt sane again. But of course, it didn't last. One night, I was just about to go to bed when I heard the voice again. It was the same as before. A strange, distorted child voice seemingly coming from nowhere. Only this time, it was somehow clearer. I could actually pick up a few words of what had been completely inaudible. I concentrated on listening to what it was saying and struggled to make sense of it. Then it became even clearer. It sounded like someone was saying, we are here. But what was even more disturbing was that it sounded like it was coming from outside. I listened harder and realized that the sounds were coming from the backyard. I started to check, but I suddenly heard glass shattering. Someone was trashing my backyard. I ducked for cover, assuming that someone was trying to break in. But after a few seconds, I still hadn't heard anyone in the house. I started to call the cops, but I decided to check the ring camera first. I wanted to know what I was dealing with. There was no one there. I was so confused. I knew that I heard someone outside, but the camera showed the yard completely empty. I ran to the backyard to see for myself, and again there was no one. The yard was trashed though, so I hadn't imagined the sounds. I had no idea what could have happened. There was a broken window and trash and debris scattered everywhere. Obviously someone had been there, or something. I thought that maybe it had been an animal. I figured that I should still call the cops, but I didn't want to try and explain how I didn't know what had been in my yard. I decided to check the camera footage again. This time I went back a couple of minutes to around the time that I heard the noises. That's when I saw something scary as hell. At first there was nothing, just like before. It was just a blank dark yard. Then something moved into view. There was this white, cloudy figure gliding across the screen. I couldn't believe it. It was a ghost right there on the camera. I was scared out of my mind. It slowly moved across the yard and out of view, stuff flying about and smashing as it went by. I had never been so creeped out. That thing had actually been in my yard. I realized then that the ghost was the source of the noise that I was hearing. It had to have been, because after that night, I never heard the noises again. It was like it had just left. I have since released the footage online. I'm not really sure why. I think I just didn't want to be the only one to live with the image. I've had my house on sale for a few weeks now. I can't bring myself to live there anymore. Not when it could come back. This story was inspired by a ring camera video that has been circulating and going viral on social media. The video showcases footage of what appears to be a seemingly normal backyard. But what comes next is something truly bizarre. Towards the left side of the camera, 
a ghost or spirit or entity of some sort flies across the owner's hammock and towards the right side of the backyard. What makes this even more horrifying was how it was alleged that the owner of the ring camera footage claims that he would hear a little girl's voice every night saying quote unquote, we are here. There was no other way to describe this other than downright disturbing. 